you want to make a journey across a sandy desert or any other arid region, you could do no better than to use a camel. Up. Now, some people would say that a camel is ugly. It's certainly ungainly, but they're a very good creature for travelling across desert regions. Why is the camel so great in the desert? Well, for one thing, camels can go a long time without water. Two weeks, three weeks, or even longer. It's not that they don't like water. In fact, at the end of a journey, a camel can drink 100 litres of water in one go, gulping it down at the rate of 20 litres a minute. They love water and they need it to replace the water they've lost through evaporation. Some people think they store water in the hump, but that's not true. The hump is actually a storage of fat. We all need energy store. We have fat underneath our skin and we use that as a storage for energy. And if we go a few days without food, we can actually use up that for energy. Well, the camel stores nearly all of its fat in one place, the hump. And actually, when it uses that up as food, it does produce a bit of water. So that's important. Another thing important about the camel is the hair that covers the body. That's important as insulation. You might say, why does a camel need insulation when it's out in the sun? Well, we all should wear clothing when we're in the hot sun. We shouldn't leave too much skin exposed because we absorb too much heat energy for the sun. Same is important for the camel. But there's something else that's equally important about the camel, and that's the structure of its feet. To see why, let's take an X-ray view. Now you and I, when we stand, stand on flat feet. We've got a big broad foot, and you can see the heel and the toes are all on the ground. But it's no good if you try running like that. It's very slow and clumpy. So if we run, we get up on our toes, and so do the hunters. If you look at a dog, it runs on its toes and the pad behind them. Well, the animals that they hunt are by and large the hoofed animals, which have had to go one better, and they stand right up on tiptoe. Now that gives them longer legs and they make less contact with the ground. And you can see that the camel, being a hoofed animal, has done exactly that. Here's the hind leg, the knee is way up on the leg, down here is the heel, permanently off the ground, and here's the very long foot coming down there. The toes, reduced to two in number, are here, and the camel is pretty well running on the tips of its toes. But uh, goats and sheep, which work like this, leave very small hoof prints. It helps them but the camel is so large and bulky that it would nail itself into the desert sands if it worked with hooves as small as that. So for the camel, it's had to go back to the start of the story and its feet have gone broad again. So if you look at the foot of a camel, you'll notice that it's a big, soft pad or cushion. In fact, somebody's described it as a flat tire filled not with air, but fat. And that's ideally suited for walking over sand of the desert. Also, you'll notice that the camel moves the two left feet forward and then the two right feet forward. It has a slow, easy gait, so it's conserving energy as it tramps across the arid region. Now, besides these things, there are also some less obvious but equally important features up front. The camel is air-conditioned. It has a heat exchanger in its snout. Look up there and you'll see a wonderful collection of convoluted bones. Now you know yourself, when you puff out air on a cold morning, it forms in a sort of cloud in front of your face. That's all waste moisture, and out in the desert, you'd be losing so much moisture, you'd uh, pretty quickly succumb. So the camel saves that by condensing it in its nose. It's rather like the cold drink bottle you take out of a fridge. It collects moisture very quickly. On a cold night, when the camel's breathing in, the air chills the inside of the nose. The hot, steamy air coming out of the camel hits those cold membranes, condenses, and goes back into the beast. It preserves almost everything that it can. Well, out in the desert, it doesn't often get a lush grass meal. It eats twiggy, woody plants, and it clips them off with these teeth here. They're pushed right to the front of the skull. The bottom jaw has teeth, and they bite against a horny pad up there. All that woody stuff is pushed backwards, and the tongue maneuvers it around in this space, passing it to these millstones of teeth back here that grind it up into little bits. So the skull is well designed for the desert. The eye is protected inside a bony ridge, and on the outside of the camel, it's protected from the sun by long eyelashes. So, for your next desert trip, that's what you need. The economical, air-conditioned, four-cushion-footed camel. Mm -hmm.